Welcome to First United Lutheran Church. This is the message from Sunday. It's our prayer that this message touches your heart and helps to guide you in your life. Let's listen. Good morning. It's wonderful to see all of you today. The sun is shining. We had a little bit of rain last night. But unfortunately, I think Friday was the last warm day. No. No? Well, I agree with you. I was sitting out in my screen porch, looking at the leaves, actually watching my favorite TV show, Jeopardy, by the way, and enjoying it and going, I think this is it. I think by Monday I won't get to watch it because I think it'll be in the 40s. Well, I'll get to watch it, just not outside. It's good to see all of you today. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's see. First, I would like to read a thank you card that we received in the mail. Thank you for the beautiful quilts. Our patients appreciate this very much. This is from Infusion Therapy at Life Care Medical Center. I know the ladies brought those over last week, and um, it is a wonderful mission. Thank you, ladies, for making those quilts. We have some announcements to go over. I hope you can smell it. I can't because they're just starting, but there is a mission trip fundraiser meal today following the worship service. Pasta, two types of sauces, Alfredo and the red sauce, salad, garlic toast, and dessert. Free will offering. This is kind of the kickoff for the youth that are heading to Denver next July. So we invite you all to stay for that. It would be wonderful. They will also have potatoes for sale. We had a very generous donation of some potatoes, and they are selling them for a dollar a pound, available in five, 10, or 50 pound lots. Candy donations are still be accept being accepted for no tricks, just treats at the church. That is on Halloween, um, oh boy. <laughs> I heard myself echo there. Um, Halloween here, four to six. It's a wonderful community event. The kids get to come in, get a treat. They also get a hot dog, I believe, and some chips and some lemonade. And if it's cold, they get a chance to warm up just a little bit and head back out. So it's a good thing. We are making a church directory. I see Doreen standing there smiling. It's been on the books, uh, in the bulletin for quite some time. We have had two volunteers. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you, Connie. And for this to be a success, we need all of you to cooperate. If you have a photo of yourself, your family, that you would like to submit, please text it or email it to either Connie or Doreen. Their contact info is in the bulletin. You can also contact the church office and I'll get it to them. That's not a problem. If you do not have a picture, which would be digital, although I think we could probably do some scanning if we need to because we can do that in the office. But if you don't have a picture and you would like one taken, they'll accommodate you as well, contact them. They would like the information by the 17th of November, but all the details are in the bulletin. And we just finished a quilt raffle. <clears throat> Dean Robinson was the winner of that one. Congratulations, Dean, are you enjoying it already? I, I understand that Dean was supposed to draw first and he said no and then Dorothy drew in Dean's name anyway. I'm not sure, Julie, was that rigged or what was the deal? Anyway, if you look on the north wall, you see we have an absolutely beautiful quilt on the wall again. So the ladies are raffling off that quilt, $5 a ticket. That drawing will be on November 3rd. Proceeds go to expenses for Operation Christmas Child. And it's just the perfect time because the 7th through 12th grade youth are going to Grand Forks to do some mission work at the rescue mission and shop for Operation Christmas Child on the 4th of November. So perfect timing, absolutely perfect timing. Any other announcements, prayer concerns? They'll start practice on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Woo! -hoo! I'm sorry. If you didn't hear Doreen, because she didn't scream loud enough, Bell's practice starting Tuesday night, 6 p.m. here. And one of our Bell's ringers has gone to college. 
If you're interested at all, come check us out. <laughs> we think we're a fun crew. We uh, are. Uh, you don't need to know music because there's a number of them that don't know notes. They just know pink and green and right and left, and that's okay. Uh, so give us a whirl. Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. Thanks. And shame on me. I haven't even been reading my own notes. I have two more announcements for you. Remember the turkey meal, which was a success, and we were raising money for replacing the ugly blue carpet in the office area? Well, the new office material, flooring material, is sitting over there. It starts tomorrow. 7 o'clock tonight, we need some strong backs, arms, legs, to move stuff out of the office up here so they can start bright and early tomorrow morning to replace that stinky, smelly carpet in the office area. So 7 o'clock tonight, if you are willing to come help, please, we'd love to see you um, moving some stuff out. So bells will be practicing wherever there's room, probably in the aisle on Tuesday. So it's going to be an interesting experience for all of us. And something that came up at the council meeting was um, we love seeing new faces in the congregation. Absolutely love seeing new people. And um, if you have any questions, anything that you want to find out about our church, our congregation, this family, which is a wonderful family, by the way, feel free to ask. Ask a service leader. I'm the service leader, obviously, this week. Come see me after the service. If you have any questions about membership, about being active, just something about us. Um, I haven't talked to Colin yet, so this is news for him. We'd like the service leaders just to be available for something like that. Or contact the church office. We'll get you in, in, in touch with a council member or a pastor dean. We'd just love to have you involved. Don't feel obligated. This is just a casual whatever works for you. And please check the bulletin, check the website. Now, any other prayer concerns? If not, will you please pray with me? Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We pray for those we name in our hearts. We pray for those who are on our prayer list. Paula, although I see Paula today and she's looking good. Sally, Marilyn, Donnie, Louise, John, Joanne. And Lord, for those survivors, the victims of Hurricane Helene and Milton. We survive snowstorms, Lord, but I can't imagine the devastation of hurricanes. We also pray for Gary and Minnie in their ministry. We grant, grant, grant them peace, comfort, healing, guidance, those things, Lord, that you know they need. They may not express it to us. We may not know the depth of their needs, but you know, Lord, and we pray for that. Father, as we meet today, may we behold your beauty and encounter your grace. We ask all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. The psalm today is 144, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. Lord, what are human beings that you care for them, mere mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath, their days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Okay. Uh-oh. I messed up. Delete that one. There we go. See, we all screw up once in a while. I guess we need Sunday school kids. Beth, 
Do you want to come up or should we just invite the kids? Kids, make your way forward. It's a very joyful noise. It's very fun on Sunday mornings when we get together. Um, and they, they are excited to be singing for you today. And at, next Sunday, there's no Sunday school. So just a little reminder, no Sunday school next Sunday. And then um, after that, we'll be starting working on our Christmas program. So here we go. <laughs> God spoke the word and there was light Made the sun and moon so we could sleep at night He created all things, animals and trees And don't forget, He made the manatee Manatee, a manatee, swimming in the sea, it's a manatee God made it all, creatures great and creatures small he made Peace. 
But yeah, they find, I don't know, boy, there's, this is a full, this? you guys are awesome just to show up. This is great. So uh, there's a short puppet show and then there's food. So uh, as you're able, find a spot on the floor, find a spot on the pew. And uh, uh, Megan, my great friend. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I get this one. Mm -hmm. And Olivia, oh man, holy smokes. Mic check. Oh, hold on there. Doggies. Hold on. Oh, good morning. Uh, if you think I'm scary, wait till Ernie gets here. There he is. Uh, well, it's great to see so many. And by the way, you guys are awesome singers. I was down at the gas pump this morning. And uh, they asked me where I was going, and, uh, and I said, I'm going over to church at the First United uh, Lutheran Church. And, and I said, and the Sunday school kids are singing there this morning. And that guy passed out. He landed on the ground, and as his eyes opened, he said, you are the luckiest guy on earth to hear those kids sing. They belted out, and besides that, they're smart. Wow. And anyway, so uh, we have a little short song we're going to do. doesn't hold a candle to what you guys have done. But this song is about uh, the Bible and uh, all the stories and the wisdom, the teachings of Jesus, that we learn how to live a godly life. Anyway, this song is called the B-I-B-L-E. This will be a IQ test. Not only for you, but for your mother and your father and your uncles and grandpa and grandma. I bet they can't even spell it. The B-I-B-L-E. Well, I guess some of them can. Okay, here we go. Music, please, maestro. How about while the kids are picking treats, you share the peace of the Lord with each other?
could we have the ushers, please? And by the way, it's noisy offering today, too. Would you please join with me in the confession of forgiveness? Merciful God and Heavenly Father, whose grace endures to all generations, you are patient and long-suffering and will forgive the sins and transactions of those who truly repent. Look with compassion upon your people and hear their supplications. I have sinned against you and am unworthy of your goodness and love. Remember not my transgressions. Have mercy upon me and help me, O God. Grant me remission of all my sins and give me the grace of your Holy Spirit that I may amend my ways and with you obtain everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We read in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God declares to us in Psalm 103, verses 10 through 12, that he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our guilty deeds. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our wrongdoings from us. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our first reading is from Proverbs chapter 26, verses 10 through 19. Like an archer who wounds at random is one who hires a fool or any passerby. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. A sluggard says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish, but he's too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. A sluggard is wise in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Like one who grabs a stray dog by the ears, is someone who rushes into a quarrel, not their own. Like a maniac shooting of flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says, I was only joking. Our second reading is from Revelations chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages and six pounds of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. Here ends the readings. We found it in, uh, it's actually Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. As they approached Jerusalem and they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Now, everybody associates this with Christmas. But you'll see that it's got some practical applications to the message that we're sharing this morning. Untie it and bring it here. And if anybody asks you, why are you doing this? Tell them, the Lord needs it. Or, I think in the words of the King James Version, the Lord hath need of it. And we'll send it back here shortly. And they went and they found the colt outside in the street, tied to a doorway, just as Jesus had said. And as they untied it, sure enough, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? But they answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. And that's the title of the message this morning is that the Lord has need of it. May God add his blessing to the reading of his gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Okay. A couple of things that we're going to bring out this morning, and, I, and, and my prayer is that they wallop us in the face, sort of like a wrecking ball, so that when we leave here today, we go home and we're thinking to ourselves, I guess God has got some use for me. 
That's my prayer. And so I'm going to read uh, another portion right here. And this comes out of First Kings. So the first element there that we had talked about the Lord having need of physical things. So my first observation, of course, is when we say the Lord has need of it, of what you've got. This is what we think. Well, all he needs is our money. Money is it. If we just give the money that's uh, show me the money, it's all good. Well, yes, it is. It's very important because that's the fuel for the movement of the kingdom of God. God does have need of your cash. It's just a tool. Uh, it's like a monkey wrench if you're a plumber. It's like a torch if you're a welder. It's just a tool. There's nothing magic, good, or evil about it. It's just a tool. So when the scripture says the Lord has need of that colt, we associate that with our material goods. Okay, cool. The Lord has need of our material goods. I think that that is uh, an understanding that we've got. But in second, in, or sorry, in First Kings, we find out a little bit more here, and this is where God is calling for a person themselves. So Elijah, he went from there and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He himself was driving the twelfth pair. And Elijah went up to him, and he threw his cloak around him. And Elisha then left his oxen, and he ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said. Then I'll come with you. Go over here. Very well, Elijah said, go back. What have I ever done to you? And, and go ahead and do that. So Elisha did. He left him, and he went back. He took his yoke of oxen, and he slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat, gave it to the people, and they all ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah, and he became his servant. This is more what I want to focus on this morning, and that is the other things besides our money and our talents and our time and our possessions. Of course, the Lord has need of those. This is the one I really want to focus on, and that is Elisha. Basically what God was saying here, Elisha, I have need of you. Let's explore that a little bit further. He says to Elisha, I need your normalcy. Think about Elisha. He loved his family. Obviously, he wanted to go and, and uh, kiss his family. He was a hard worker. Many people here, including myself, have spent a lifetime of labor working, probably at Polaris, some at Marvin's, some on farms, some in the home, some at who knows what, driving truck. Hard work was the norm. It's been for thousands of years. Having a job is a wonderful thing. But God came and said, I need that normalcy. I want to release you from this. Notice Elisha, he was a hard worker. He had other guys that were working for him. He was a supervisor. He had his entire life planned out. He had a job. He had a home. He had a family. He had everything all lined up. Looked pretty good. This is looking pretty good. It's all normal. And then along came God. It says, you're living beneath your privilege, Elisha. I want to take your normalcy away. I want to take your just like everybody else-ness away from you. I want to relieve you of that burden. All those workaday chains, and I want to put within you something that is explosively spectacular. How many of us are just normal workaday people? And I am assuring you this morning that every single one who is a very normal person here, I think God is saying to each one of us, as he does, I have something truly exceptional 
for you. Outstanding. Astonishing. Amazing. I want you to be explosively spectacular. So we talk about God liberating from normalcy. I have because we are uh, we're wanting to get down and, uh, and share our, uh, our meal together. I've got a series of people, truly modern people, that a modern God here in a modern place, in a modern fashion, has liberated people. These guys are achievers. These gals are achievers. These are people who accomplished some extraordinary things with their physical life. And in a lot of cases, they're also six-time losers because they were headed down the wrong path with all their talents. The first guy here, I uh, encourage you to read this book. This is Kamal Salim. And his story is about being a Palestinian terrorist. He was a good one. At the age of eight, he was carrying dynamite through tunnels. His belief was that the world could be made perfect if all of the Jews were killed. God liberated him from that mistaken impression, from that normalcy. Kamal Salim. I have another one. Sergei Kordakov, Russian. At the age of 20, rising rapidly in the communist Marxist regime that was the Soviet Union at that time. Totally committed to the idea that an all-powerful government was the solution to all things. Almighty God relieved him of that. Steve McQueen discovered at the height of his Hollywood fame and all of his fortune that, in fact, fame and fortune and alcohol did not have the answers to life. All the things that he had been striving for and achieved, and achieved, this guy in his heyday was as famous as, what's her name, Taylor Swift. <laughs> had it all right at the top of the game. And he discovered the emptiness of that. We're not done. This guy here, uh, this is another interesting book, Save Me From Myself. This guy was a drug addict. He was the drummer for KORN Corn. Uh, they were a... I don't know even how you describe their music. But you can see in those eyes the emptiness of drug addiction. The bottomless pit that was drug addiction, but was also fame, fortune, and glory. There's another one. This kid on the left, his name is Nicky Cruz, and he was a president of one of the most notorious gangs in... Uh, in Brooklyn. We see there David Wilkerson handing him, uh, well, it's a bat. Actually, Nikki is handing uh, his bat. It was one of his weapons for street gang fights. But they used chains and zip guns and regular guns, and, uh, you know, they would just. The cult of violence was the thing for Nikki Cruz and also for hatred. He hated everybody. He hated everything. He hated his parents. Everything. He was a dope smoker way back when. And Jesus Christ liberated him from the chains of normalcy in Brooklyn. This is another one. This comes out of the 70s, basically. This is Susan Atkins. She started out her life as a, as a young gal... Very much like Alan, that we, who, whom we baptized this morning. She was a Sunday school attendance champion. She left home, got involved with Charlie Manson, entered a world of twisted, wild sex and drugs, and eventually ended up 
in involved with murder. But all the way all through that, she was convinced that this was the right way to go. An empty path. Just as empty as Elisha's. Until the Lord Jesus Christ stepped into her life. I've got another one here. This is uh, somebody you very well might recognize. Chuck Norris. There was a story about him. Do you know why there's no life on Mars? Uh, it's because Chuck Norris visited there once. Chuck Norris, for you math people, he's the only one who ever counted to infinity. And he did it twice. <laughs> he can divide by zero. And he was bit by a snake one time. Terrible, venomous cobra. And after three agonizing days... The snake finally died. All right, so Chuck Norris. World champion. A lot of you kids, young, long, guys and gals in Rozo, um, sports, athletics are a really, really, really big deal. They were for me. They certainly were. And they are for you. And it's a great thing. There's nothing at all wrong with them. Chuck Norris followed that path of athletics until he became the world champion uh, kickboxer. Tremendously talented. The best that there was on planet Earth. But he came to the realization that that was not the answer to life. Jesus Christ was the answer to life. December 7, 1941. Mitsuo Fushida, hundreds of miles off the coast of Hawaii, led his squad of bombers. And Pearl Harbor was the result of that. Mitsuo Fushida was convinced that war was the answer to everything. But he discovered, of course, at the end of the war, when all around him was bloodshed, death, and violence. War is not the solution to anything. And Mitsuo Fushida knelt on his knees and bowed to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. So why do I bring all of these up? We got a tremendous list of failed... We got terrorism. We've got communism. We have got Hollywood fame. We have got drug addiction. We've got rock music. We've got violence as a, as a gang member. We've got with Susan Adkins, sex and drugs and murder. We've got a world champion athlete. And we've got a commander of war. What do all of these people have in common? Everything that they lived for became an empty bucket. Useless, worthless. They had no purpose in life. Jesus Christ came to each one of them like he comes to you. What did we each come into church this morning with? Normalcy, probably. But maybe we brought pain. Maybe we brought uncertainty of the future. Maybe we brought failing health. Whatever those human frailties are, they're just part of that same long list of these um, famous people that we talked about. And there's only one road home. There's only one true answer to all of the failures in life and the emptiness of life. And I will challenge especially the young people here this morning. Do something extraordinary. Ask God to give you a vision like he gave to Elisha. To call you out of normalcy, to call you out of work-a-day life. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing, nothing at all. In fact, the Bible talks about the honorableness of providing for a family. Don't get me wrong. We don't all have to become a missionary to Africa. 
We don't need to pack up everything that we, we own and go. We don't need to sell everything that we have worked for our whole life. It's possible that God would call us to that. What God calls normal people to, probably, more often is just normal acts of faith. The true maturity is this, probably. We learn this in, uh, in Corinthians. The meat of the gospel is not to learn theology. The meat of the gospel is to learn to get along with our fellow Christians. Probably one of the most difficult things that there is. God is calling you to that. So young people, ask God where he wants you to go, what he wants you to do. Ask him to lead you to a path of exceptionality, whatever that may be. Moms and dads, the same thing. Strive to be the most extraordinary mom and dad that you can, especially as you are raising your children. No higher call, probably, on earth than to be that mom and to be that dad as these children are growing up, to be a role model for them. You're called out of normalcy. You're called to be more than that workaday person. You're called to be a disciple. Each of us are. My prayer this morning is that as we think through this list of people that had to find the bottom of the barrel before they realized the strength that there is in the gospel, my prayer is we can be like that. We're going to close with a song. It's called You Can't Beat God Given. So I'd like to invite uh, the group up here and, and then we'll also close with uh, fill my cup Lord but the key to this song is that all these things that I've talked about we think to ourselves what a pain what a sacrifice it is to give everything that I own to God is that true that he he demands that, he asks for it, he calls for that. Uh, yes, he does. Indeed, he does. But it costs us everything. What do we get in exchange for it? We get everything. And so, the title of this song, You Can't Beat God Given. this keyboard on sale and if you put this thing on the knob here well am I embarrassed here we go well this way we're standing up for the start of the song anyway three four you
everyone to by all means come down and uh, share a meal with uh, with our family and support our kids don't be afraid to break open that wallet <laughs> let's sing the table grace and uh, strengthen for thy service be be present at our table Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you for listening to this message from First United Lutheran Church. Thank you.